In previous seasons of The Pickup, we've undertaken the cruel task of waking up before the sun to try and find out who are the masochists in the water before anyone else and why they choose to forego sleep for certain. Hi, my name is Carlos Munoz. I'm competing here at the US Open. I didn't get first place, but that doesn't mean that I can be the first in the water. I'm gonna go get some sleep. See you guys tomorrow in the morning. Good morning, brother. Ready to go, yeah. It's very early out right now. Uh, I think we're gonna put it out in the US Open. See who has the, the people that wake up early and start the day at the beach. Okay, we're gonna run on the beach and see what's going on. But for the moment, no cars. Yeah, you see, let's see who is in the beach already. Looks bumpy now. Every time you wake up early, it's the best though. Enjoy the day. Liam O'Brien. Sophie McCulloch. Holly Williams. Keiko Biyashi. Taichi Okira. Leo Muniz. John Shanka. 5.45 I think. 6 o'clock? 6, yeah. Probably like 6. I'm gonna catch maybe one wave, two waves. That's all you need in the heat. 6 or something? Not too sure, but... <laughs> 6... 10, 6.20, 6.15 a.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was still waking up. <laughs> <laughs> Try and beat the crowd. It's always overhead on me, but today it's definitely overhead on me. Surf, if it's good or bad, just go in the water. It's a QS routine. <laughs> All right, in our last segment, we catch up with the legendary HB Shaper, Jeff Doc Lausch. I'm Jeff Doc Lausch. Surf Prescription Surfboards, established in 1982 in Huntington Beach. And we borrowed a couple of his most experimental creations. I call it the USO, Unidentified Surfing Object. Giving them to Tara Watanabe and Grant Noble to see if they could shoot the pier not once, but twice, a la Corey Lopez, who achieved the feat when he won the US Open in 2003. So we want to try and recreate it. Do you guys think they can do it? 100%. You do? Yeah. All right. Yeah, they couldn't do it. Really? Really? Yeah, oh, man. failed experiment. What a bummer. Yeah, it might not have been the most ideal conditions, but let's check it out. Look at those things. <laughs> Actually, my first board, I bought at a swap meet when I was like five years old was a dock. Wow. I didn't know it was like a short board nose. Yeah, dude, this thing's <laughs> crazy. I like the green wax. People go, how does it ride? And I go, oh, just like it looks. Weird, but kind of cool. Shit cars. This is the Turtwin pin. I do a million of these. Some people do dark blue, some people do black walls. I'm just green, it's my color. This is the paint room. I actually like to paint them. I make some weird boards, but this thing is far out. <laughs> Not broke, don't fix it. Same as it ever was. We got a spicy flying turtle with a single slot channel. The nickname Doc, it wasn't my idea.
I had to cut long hair at the time in the dust mask, and he'd go, oh, whoa, it's the mad doctor. And I'm all like, shut up, like, beat it. Fun. I love my life. I love that I get to do this for a living. It's just like dream. I think it's fully possible to shoot the pier and go back, but if anyone's gonna do it, it's gonna be Tara. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Our next episode will drop Monday, August 8th, and thank you to the Huntington Beach International Surfing Museum for having us. Any last words? Stay happy and stay hydrated. Love you, PT. Yeah, PT, it's good to see you still sporting pink. So in 1969, then I said to my mum, I go, hey, mum, I'm getting a new surfboard. What color should I get it? And she says, you know, son, I think you should get the next board hot pink. That way they'll never miss you. And so that, that began the whole pink thing and it became my trademark. Yeah. <laughs>